recently we've seen how to draw a simple tic-tac-toe field and with our new kind of skills and knowledge let's try to apply this very practically and let's try to expand our tic-tac-toe example a little bit so what we're going to try to do in this tutorial is that we're going to try to create a tic-tac-toe game where we ask two users for input and um, every time we print the tic-tac-toe field to the screen um, and each turn a user can put in the field where they want to put um, where they want where they want to put their their kind of cross or their circle so um, we're not gonna really go into checking for winning and all that stuff yet because that's gonna take a while um, and that would be a very very intricate example but we're gonna go and take it as far as printing the final fields after the user is put in an input. Um, and after that, um, it's really just adding extra if cases and extra checks. But let's just let's just go through it once. Um, let's let's see how far we get. Um, and then yeah, we'll, 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 we'll kind of sum up at the end. So the first thing that we want to do is since we're going to be drawing this field a lot, we actually want to create a function that we can call to draw our field. So what we want to do is we want to define a function um, and we'll just call this function um, draw field. And so we define a function using the def keyword to indicate that we're going to define a function. Our function name is going to be draw field. And then we're going to open and close the brackets um, to indicate that we're going to have some input here. Mm. And yeah, so right now let's just, let's just kind of leave the input empty. We're going to change this later, but in here, we're just going to draw our field. Now we've already pretty much gone over this example in one of the earlier videos where we've drawn the field. It's just that now we're putting it inside of a function. So if you remember earlier, we used two for loops and some if statements um, to draw the field, but now um, we're just going to put this all inside a function. So we'll go through this um, a little bit quicker. We'll still explain everything as we go, but if you want to see this part of the draw field again, I would recommend you go back to that that video where we just used for loops and if statements to draw the field um, to kind of better understand what exactly is happening. But yeah, so let, let's just kind of go through it again. Um, and so if you remember, let's just draw our tic-tac-toe field up here. So we start with a, a space and then we have a vertical line and another space and a vertical line and another space. And then our next line is going to be our horizontal separators. So we'll have five of those there. And then our third line is going to be a space and a vertical line and a space and a vertical line and another space. And then our fourth line is going to be five um, horizontal separators again. And then our final line is just going to be a space and a vertical line and a space and a vertical line and a space again. So this is how our tic-tac-toe field is going to look like. These um, vertical lines here are vertical separators. These horizontal lines are our horizontal separators. And each of these spaces are fields where the users can put in their values. Um, yeah, and so we'll just make a range function and we're going to start counting at zero rather than at one. So we'll go zero and then let's just add some space here so that um, it's not confusing. So zero, one, two, three and four. So these numbers are the numbers that correspond to these rows. So rows zero, two, and four are the rows that have the space, vertical line, space, vertical line, space. And rows one and three are the ones that have the five horizontal um, dashes, or what we're going to use it for is being the horizontal separators. So these are just going to be the lines of our field, just like we've had before. So let's start off with our for loop. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go for and we want to create the rows. So we're going to go use the temporary variable row and we're going to go in the range up to but not including five so that we get five numbers. These numbers are going to be these numbers are going to be zero, one, two, three, and four um, because we go in a range starting at zero uh, which we got by not putting a starting value going up to but not including 5. So we're going to get the values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 for our temporary variable row. Um, and so 
if we remember from before, we want to check if rho, as we see here, if rho is even, if it's an even row, we want to print this. So we want to print the space, vertical line, space, vertical line, space. And if it's an odd row, we want to print this horizontal separator. So to check if it's an even row, we want to check if we divide row by two, do we get a remainder? So if we divide row by two and the remainder, and if we compare this remainder to zero, so if we divide row by two and the remainder is zero, that means row is even, or so, or that means two fits in perfectly into row. So for example, zero divided by two, we get no remainder. Two divided by two, we get no remainder. Since two fits in once perfectly into two, four divided by two, we get no remainder. Since two fits in twice perfectly into four, one divided by two, we get a remainder of one. Since um, we have this, this one remainder, um, and three divided by two, a two fits in once perfectly into three, and then we get one divided by two, which gives us a remainder of one. So if our remainder is zero, or if we have an even number, then what we're gonna do is we're going to print this line here. Um, and so let's just add a comment here, print right writing line. So we'll, we'll just call it this, so this, and we'll add the code here in a second. Um, and else, so if rho is not even, or if it's not perfectly divisible by two, we're just going to print out five horizontal dashes um, like this. So if rho is one or three, we're just gonna print out these horizontal dashes. So let's go back to this if statement here. Um, and so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna loop through and we're just gonna print this. Um, if we remember from last time, we printed the space and the horizontal, uh, the vertical line individually rather than printing it all at once. So we used another for loop and we looped through column by column. So for column in range, and let's also just stick with five. So going zero, one, two, three, four. So if we number that, we get zero, one, two, three, and four. So these are the columns that we have. So this is column zero, this is column one, column one, column two, column three and column four. So we see column zero, two, and four actually correspond to the spaces, the, the writable spaces and columns one and three correspond to the, uh, to the vertical lines or the vertical separators. So here we're gonna take on the values again, zero, one, two, three, and four. Um, so this is columns gonna take on the values zero, one, two, three, and four. Um, and once again, here we're gonna check if our column is even, so if we divide column by two and we look at the remainder, um, so if we divide column by two and if the remainder of dividing column by two is zero, so if column is even, so zero, two, four gives us a remainder of zero if we divide by two, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to print a space. Um, now, remember I said we're going through this a little bit quicker because we already covered this in an earlier video and we don't want to kind of repeat all of this. So if this is a little bit too fast or you wanna go over it again, um, I would recommend going back to that video, you know, checking it out, really going through what we're doing. Um, but this is just kind of a short recap session for printing this field. Um, and if our column is not divisible by two, we wanna print out, uh, or else we want to print out um, we want to print out the vertical line. And now we also remember that we need to put in the space that we need to have spaces here, or we have need to have no separation so that we stay on the same line. So we need to change our end. And instead of putting a new line, we just want to stay on the same line and not add any extra special separation. We also need to change the end here to be no extra separation, just kind of continue where we left off. And we also need the special case to check, or rather we need to say if, if our column is not the final value, then we have no separation, but if it is the final value, then we need to print a new line. So if column is not equal to, and our final value is gonna be four here, rather than five, which we had in our last example, 
So if column is four, what we need to do is we need to print a new line afterwards. But if it's zero or two, we want to stay on the same line so that we can have these vertical lines here. Um, so if column is not equal to four, so if column is zero or two, we want to continue writing on the same line. But else, if column is four, we actually want to add a new line at the end so that we print this horizontal separator on a new line. So else, we would just want to print a space and we're not going to change this extra end. We're just going to leave it um, as a new line. And so let's just take out this comment since we've completed this part now. Um, and let's call this function ones to make sure it works. So we'll call draw field. Um, and if we call this function, we should just be able to draw this field here. Um, let's see, yeah, let's run this. Let's see what we get. Um, yeah, so we get what we expected. Um, and what we also got last time, we got our tic-tac-toe field. So we loop through row by row and each row we either print the writable parts or the horizontal separators. Um, and if we um, print the writable parts, we actually go through it column by column. And here we print the space and then we have, we stay on the same line and we print the new line and then we print another space and then we stay on the same line and we print this, this horizontal um, bar again, just like we had here. And then we print a space and now we actually print a new line too so that the next time we print something we're up uh, we end up on a new line so that our horizontal separator is not on the same line anymore but it's on a new line so if we call our draw field function this is actually what it does it uh, it draws the current field for us so yeah cool so now we have a function that we can call whenever we like um, and every time we call it we kind of, we, we, we draw the current standing of the field. Um, okay, so now let's make it interesting and let's expand on this a little bit. So we'll use um, a similar tactic that we used before um, to make an infinite loop. So we'll do while true. Um, so if you remember um, using the while loop, so if we put in while true here, that's shorthand for writing while true is equal to true. So our what we created here is a while loop. And in this while loop, we put in the condition true. And this condition is shorthand for, or what, what actually happens here, it checks if true is equal to true. Oops. So it's only with one E. And since it's always going to be equal to true, we're just going to have an infinite loop. Now, technically, we don't need an infinite loop. We actually only need to go through it nine times. So we could also make a for loop, for example, and just go through it nine times because there can only be nine input values. Um, but let's just stick with an infinite loop right now, just so that we kind of get familiar with it uh, and we know how to implement an infinite loop if we ever need one. So yeah, this while true here is just shorthand for writing while true is equal to true. So this is the same thing as this. So while true is, is the same thing as while well, checking if true is equal to true. But let's just leave this out because we don't really want to write that much. We want to write something that works um, in as little kind of characters as possible. We don't want to waste our time writing just a bunch of characters. We want to keep it short and to the point, but we want it to work nicely. So that's why we'll just use this shorthand here. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask for input. So we'll create a variable called move, let's call it move. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the user for um, input. And then uh, we want to um, ask them, so what do we wanna do? Well, we need to get the column and we need to get the row. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the user for column and row input. So we're gonna to need to ask them for a column and a row. So let's let's ask them for a row first. Please enter the row. So first we ask the user to enter the row that they wanna put, oh, whoops, this, these are the rows, that they wanna put, that they wanna move in. So we'll call this variable here move row. Um, and so, we'll use the conversion to an integer. So we'll type in the int and we'll cast put this 
around the input. So what we're doing here is we've created a variable called move row. And inside of this, we're going to store the row that the user wants to put their move into. And we're asking the user to enter a row or enter the row. And when they enter it, we're going to try to convert it to an integer. So they're going to enter a number, hopefully. Um, and we can, all, of course, check for this later and we can make special cases. But let's just trust the user um, and let's have them enter a number. Um, and this number is going to be put in as a string through the input or as a word. So it's going to be inside of these quotation marks. Um, and to convert it to a number or an integer, we're going to use the int keyword and then the open and close brackets. And we're going to convert the string or the word here that we get to an integer or a number. And we're going to save this in the move row. So that's the row that we want to place into. And now we want to ask for the column. So we'll have another variable called move column. And we'll just do the same thing as above. We ask for input and we'll specify to the user, please enter the column just like this. So we created a variable move column. We ask for input, please enter the column. But since our input is going to be in the form of a string or that's, that's the way it's going to be saved. So all the input we get is going to be kind of inside of these quotation marks. So it's going to be a word or a string. We have to try to convert it to a number or an integer again. So we have to use int around the input. And this is going to try to convert our word or a string that we get in here to a number or an integer. And it's going to save this and move column. So what we do is we ask the user first to input the row, then to input the column. And if possible, and we trust the user here that they enter an integer, um, we convert their input to integers and we store it in the move row and in the move column um, variables. So cool. Now we've got the moves. So what do we do with this? How, how are we going to apply this? So the best thing that we can do um, to apply this is um, we have to kind of save this as a list. So there, there are two things actually that we need to do. One of them is we need to apply the move and we need to save the move. So that's, that's one thing we need to apply and save the move. The second thing that we need to do is we need to check which player's turn it is. So do we put it in X or an O? So let's start off. Um, let's start off with, well, actually let's start off with the player. So we'll just start off with player is equal to one. So we're creating a variable called player and we're going to have it equal to the value one. So this kind of means our player is going to have the value one. So effectively what we're reading is our player is currently player one. And what we're going to do is we're going to check, oops, say here, let's make a new, on a new line, we're going to have an if statement. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to see which player's turn it is. Um, so if player is equal to one, so if, if player is one, then, and then we're, we'll write this in a second, make move for player one. So what we're doing is if our player variable here has the value one, we want to make the move for player one. Else our move is going to be made for player two. So make move for player two. So here, so what we're doing is we've created the player variable and we've asked for the move of the player, that's the row and the column. Um, and we've checked for, uh, and then, then we're checking which player's turn it is and we make the appropriate move. So how do we make a move? Well, the way we're gonna make a move is we're gonna save our playing field in a list. So what, we're, what we wanna do is we wanna keep track of all of this in a list. So we'll make a list or we'll create a variable and inside of this variable, we're gonna save um, our playing status. So, uh, or our playing field or our current field. So current field 
is what we'll call our variable and our current field is going to be equal to a list um, and inside of this list we're just going to save um, we're just going to have all of these values here so inside of this list we're going to have um, our first element so element one then we're going to have element two and element three uh, so we're going to have three elements and we'll just have it so that each element corresponds to a column so we want to have our current field and we're going to have it be in, in rows and each row or um, uh, in each, each each kind of element is going to correspond to a certain column so element one is going to be column one element two is going to be column two element three is going to be column three so how would we do this well element one for it to be column one it actually needs to save three values so how are we going to th save three values in one element um, and so the way that we can do that is we can actually put another list inside of a list so we've, we've seen this earlier and um, it may be may have been a bit confusing then why we would ever want to do that but we're going to do it now and we're going to see it's actually really really practical in this case because it really lets us keep track um, of, of our playing field in a kind of it lets us kind of have a better picture of it so the, the reason that we're doing all this formatting is because it helps us imagine it better um, and so it'd probably be easier for us to imagine having um, a list of three elements and each element corresponds to a row we can kind of picture that nicely in our head so we'll see that in a second um, so let's create another list inside of our first element and this first list is going to correspond to these three elements so column column one row one column two column one row two and column one row three so we're just going to have our standard values um, in here and let's just have the standard values be space so kind of empty so our three elements are going to be three spaces like this so just like we've had up here um, our current playing field um, or our current row or the, or the current column that we've created is the first one and our column value um, one for row one is just empty like it is right here um, our column value for row two in the first column is also empty and our column value for row three um, in our first column is also empty so we're just trying to replicate this empty field in here now we'll do the same thing for element two because all of these values are empty too so we'll put in another list here and we'll create three elements each of these elements corresponds to a row and they're all empty so we'll put an empty element here and then the comma to indicate the next element and then an empty element and then another empty element so each of these elements here correspond to rows one two and three so one two and three um, in column two since they're the second element and we'll do the same thing for element three so we'll create another list here and we have to make sure that we actually close this list not that we need two kind of ending square braces not just one um, and here we'll have elements one two and three also just be spaces just like we've had back here so this may look extremely weird at first um, but give it some time try to look at it try to understand what we're doing so I'll, I'll explain it one more time um, but it's really useful if you can kind of picture this in your head so um, that the whole point of the way that we're formatting this is that it's easier for us to kind of imagine so right now we've created kind of one line but if we can imagine that we take this 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 line here and we make it two-dimensional so that if we drag this kind of down like that and this down like that and this down like that that we kind of get this playing field here so that this this value here for example corresponds to this value the second value and the first element corresponds to this one the third value in the first element corresponds to here then we move on to the second column which is the second element in this big list and the, so the first value corresponds to the first value here the second value to the second one the third one to the third one 
And then our final element, our third element, the first value corresponds to the first one, the second one to the second one, and the third one to the third one. So what we've created is we've created a list and in each of these elements we save the column. So this is column one, column two, column three. And in each of these columns, we've saved um, the elements row by row. So row one, row two, row three for column one. Then column two here, we can have row one, row two, and row three. And for column three, we have row one, row two, and row three. So this is kind of a way that we're gonna simulate our playing field or the current status of our playing field. And we started off empty because our playing field is gonna be empty because no one's made a move yet. So let's make a move. Let's go back in here and let's have player one make a move or let's put in the move for player one. So what we wanna do is we wanna access um, our list um, or where we wanna access, yeah, our list here, we wanna access our current field and we're gonna update it. We're gonna access our current field and we want to access the row and the column. So how are we gonna access this? How, how do we wanna make, how are we gonna make sure that we're accessing the right element? Well, if we remember in this big list, in the current field, this big list, each of these big elements here, each of these lists corresponds to one element and these elements are the columns. So these three elements here are these three big lists, these three smaller lists here are each elements and each of these are a column. So the first thing that we're going to access in this current field is the move column. So each of these small lists corresponds to one column, column one, column two, and column three, column one, column two, and column three. So that's why the first thing we need to access is the first column. And that's just because that's that's the way we're, we're imagining it in our head. And if you wanna imagine it differently, and if you wanna go row by row, you can also do that. So you can say this is row one, and then you can imagine this one being down here and saying this would be row two. So if we kind of imagine moving this down here, we would have row two. And if we imagine moving this down here, we would have row three below here. Um, and then you can go with move row first. We're gonna imagine it in our head that each of these we kind of turn by 90 degrees like this so that we get our three columns. Um, and so that's the approach that we're gonna take. And that's gonna be your mental image of this list, but you can do it another way. Um, but we'll just say that each of these is a column. And then, so we access the move column and then we get um, one of these three elements and each of these elements is a smaller list that has the row value. And so inside the column, we wanna access the move row. So the corresponding row to this column. So first we access the column because that's the way we're imagining it. And then we access the row, um, which is inside of each of these columns. So again, column one, column two, column three, row one, row one, row one, row two, 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 and row three, three, three. Now, technically in terms of indices, it would be column zero, column one, column two, and row zero, row zero, row zero, row one, row one, row one, row two, row two, row two. So that's how it's like in terms of indices, but um, for practical terms, it's also just columns one through three and rows um, one through three. So you just have to kind of also make that conversion in our head that we have the first row is actually index zero, for example, just because the, we start counting at zero in programming. But yeah, so we're gonna update the column and the row in our current field and we're gonna assign a new value and let's give player one the cross. So our current field is going to be um, a cross for player one. And if we do the same thing down here for player two, so we just access the same thing, we just do the exact same thing here. We wanna access the column and the row. So in our current field, we access first the column because that's the way we're imagining it in our head. If you wanna do it row by row, that's fine. You just have to switch these two and you kind of have to keep track of that. Um, 
yeah, you have to keep track of that up in here, but we'll just do it column by column. So we'll access the column. We'll imagine that each of these is one column and then we wanna access the row. And in here, we'll just put in a circle or the, the O. So if it's player is one turn, we'll put in um, current field one, um, or we'll, we'll, we'll put in an X. Um, and if it's player two turn, we'll put in an O. And since we wanna alternate players, if it's player is one turn and they make their move, now player is equal to two. So in player one, what do we do? Well, we have a move and then we check if it's player is one turn and if it is, they make the move. And now we change the player to be equal to two. So now it's player two turn. Um, and if it's player's two turn, they make the move and now we change the player back to one. So if it's player one turn, make a move, put in the cross, player two, now it's player's two turn. And if it's player's two turn, we make the move, put in the O or the circle, and now it's player's one turn. And since we're using the else statement here, if we execute this if, um, we're not gonna go into this else, so we don't have to worry about having a player two here and then overwriting what we've had before. So if it's player one, we'll execute all of this. And since we only have an else statement here, we'll skip it if we executed the if, and then we'll just kind of start the loop again from the beginning, and then player two can put in their values. So now we've done that, um, and we can run this, um, and, but we haven't really linked it to our board yet. So that's what we'll do next. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to link it to our board. But let's just let's just run it once, see what we get now. Um, and then, yeah, let's move on from there. So we see here, please enter a row. We're gonna have row zero. Please enter a column, column one. And well, nothing happens now because we're not really doing anything else, but we're asking just for the row um, and the column. And then technically we've made a move, but we're not really seeing it yet. So maybe let's add some print functions to kind of see what we're getting. Um, so let's let's stop our code. And at the very end, let's print the current field. And maybe in the beginning, let's print which player's turn it is. So player, um, players, players turn and here let's just put in the number of the player. So we'll use the comma um, and then we're gonna put in the player. Um, so if you remember this from the, from the input and output, so this is a special format. We have our string, our player's turn, and then we put a comma separator here and then we put in the variable player, which either has the values one or two. Um, and so we'll get player's turn and let's put a space here so that we have some separation and we'll get either one or two. And so this is just, this, this comma allows us to actually put in an integer here and the print function will just convert it all internally and make a big kind of string or a big word out of it. So yeah, and maybe in the beginning, let's just also print the current field before we even enter the loop, um, just, just so that we can see everything that's going on. And maybe let's also add a new line after each of these um, input requests, also just for formatting. So we're just making it a little bit neat right now. Let's run the code. Um, we'll get some, let, and then we'll, let, we'll see what we get. So first we get the list, the empty list here. That is, um, if we make this really big. So first we get this empty list here, or the list that contains a bunch of spaces, which is our current field. That we have that we have here. So our current field is just these three elements containing the the three small lists in this one big list. Um, that's what we get from here. Then we enter the while loop. We print the player's turn. Currently, player's turn is one. Now we ask, please enter the row. Now we enter the row. Let's put in. Let's put in row zero. Now we ask for the column. Let's put in column zero two. Um, and now we see we've updated our list. So player one 
has made the move column zero, so first element in this list, and row zero, so first element in this small list here. Um, and now it's player's two turn. Let's say player wants to access row two um, in column one. So column one is actually the index with is actually the corresponding index. So one here actually corresponds to column two and two here in the row actually corresponds to row three if we think of it how we counted the rows before. But since we're dealing with indices um, rather than actual numbers, so we'll see here for column one, so that would be the second element in the list. So this is column zero, which is um, the first element. This is column one. Um, and inside of column one, we access row two. So we've got row zero, row one, and row two. So we've seen that we've, we've updated our, our list again, and we've put in player two's play turn, and, and we've put in the O here. And we see up here that it's player's two turn, and, and then we make the move, and now it's player one's turn again. So yeah, let's, let's stop our code. Um, and so we've kind of put in this basic functionality of, of making the moves. But now the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to expand on this. Um, and we're gonna need to expand on it uh, in such a way so that we can now kind of incorporate it here into the draw field. And we wanna transfer our current field and the input to the draw field. So every time a player makes a move, we wanna draw the field and we wanna see the updated version. So that's what we need to work on next. Thank you.